everyone. In this video, we are going to move on from hiding our dialog box, as that's now a capability, to hiding the entire dialog system and bringing it up when we need it. This is useful not only for visual novels, but if you plan to use this system for different projects as well, you can bring up the characters and the dialogue only when needed. So this is going to work through the canvas group on our main canvas. We've, we don't have one assigned here yet, but if we were to go ahead and add a canvas group to our main our main canvas then we could fade that out and it should fade everything with it now it works but one thing you'll notice is the background does not fade in or out despite it being an image on the UI it should work but the reason it's not is because we're using our own custom shader on this so that's something that will need to be addressed but for now let's get the main canvas group working to hide and reveal our entire dialog system. Similar to how we did for the dialog container, our dialog system is going to use show and hide commands now as well. So we can make these commands right now, show and then public void hide. So we're gonna need a reference to the canvas group on this dialog system. But this dialog system is not attached to the canvas itself. It's a separate manager object, which means we need to link it to the actual uh, canvas that we need to control. So we'll make a serialized field here with a private canvas group called the, we're gonna call this the main canvas. And now before we go any further, maybe it would be best since our dialog container and our dialog system are basically going to use the same commands here. As a matter of fact, the, the same exact information. It won't make sense to duplicate this, so why don't we extract all of this into a separate class that we can assign to both the dialog container and the, uh, the dialog system. Let's create a new script inside of our core scripts called a canvas group controller. And this canvas group controller is not going to be a mono behavior because we're going to spawn it for whatever needs it. But it will take in a mono behavior which will run the coroutines. This will be stored in a private variable called owner, which we'll be assigning inside of the constructor. The same thing for our root CG. We'll assign that to the constructor and assign it to the private variable so we can have a reference to it. Which means let's jump into our dialog container and cut all of this code from the root CG where we define that we'll just actually delete that we'll take the coroutines and everything related to showing and hiding and we'll go ahead and paste it into our canvas group controller the same thing with the functions in our dialog container let's go ahead and cut that and paste that into our canvas group controller and we just need a default fade speed as that was defined in the dialog container, I've went ahead and cut and paste that in here as well. So this is all the code that we have made for revealing and hiding our dialog container. Okay, so with all of that copied into our new script, this dialog container is going to need a reference to something that's going to control that canvas group to make it fade in and out. This will be a CG controller. And since we need to create it on start, we're going to actually give this thing an initialization function. This initialization function is going to be public, and it will do nothing if a private boolean for initialized is already false. So if it's already initialized, it will do nothing, but if it isn't, then we need to create a new CG controller. So we'll say CG controller equals new canvas group controller, and we're going to pass in the dialog system dot instance as the owner that will run the coroutines, and then for the canvas group that will be affected and controlled, we'll do re root dot get component canvas group. So for our dialog system, when we initialize it, let's go ahead and initialize the dialog box as well. So dialog container dot dot initialize. And in order to satisfy the other logic that we made, we need to incorporate show and hide as well as it is visible boolean onto this dialog container that can just reference the functions and variables of the canvas group controller. So our public boolean is visible, which tells us whether this is actively visible in the scene and we can see the text. We'll just point to CG controller that is visible. And then public coroutine show will point to CG controller show and public coroutine 
hide will point to CG controller hide. And doing that, we can see that the logic still works. So perfect. We are now running the same logic, just isolated and reusable. Which means now for our dialog system, we can create its own canvas group controller. So let's go ahead and add a private canvas group controller, CG controller to our dialog system as well. And when we initialize ourselves, we will go ahead and say that CG controller equals new canvas group controller. And we're going to give this as the owner and the canvas group, which we have main canvas up above, is going to be the canvas group that will be controlled. And then that just means for our show and hide commands for the dialog system, we're going to go ahead and point that to the CG controller dot show and CG controller dot hide. And we can also do the same thing for public pool is visible, and that can point to our CG controller dot is visible. But I also need to make sure that the void is actually a coroutine return type, so we would be able to track the progress of show and hide. And then we can add that to our general extension with show and hide, which will manage the whole system. So show and hide will show and hide the dialog system, while show db and hide db will show and hide the dialog box. And we just point those to their own commands, which do the same thing as the dialog container, but just on the dialog system through that canvas group controller. Ah, and you see, this is a good thing about the command system debugs. I can see I need to change the name of that because a command already exists called show and hide, and that's used for our characters. So I'm instead going to call those show UI and hide UI. Let's make sure that in our scene, we go ahead and add a canvas group to our main canvas and then associate that to the main canvas variable inside of our main canvas. Where did I put that? Canvas main, right there. There we go. So now we've got that hooked up. So after they come into the inn, after the innkeeper comments on the storm, we're going to hide the UI and then we're going to wait and we're going to show the UI. So we come through, we're in the end, and the innkeeper comes out, and then we fade out, and we fade back in. It would be nice to be able to specify a speed for that, so we can control the actual duration of that fade. So to add that, inside of our canvas group controller, let's just add a speed parameter, which defaults to 1 to both show and hide. And let's also make the ability to set an immediate uh, visibility on both of those as well, which defaults to false, and then just pass those values into the fading coroutine. So once we get in there, we'll go ahead and say that we're going to multiply the default fade speed times whatever speed has been passed in. And right before that, if we are immediate, so if immediate cg.alpha is going to equal the alpha, we're just going to go ahead and immediately assign it. And that just means that these functions now need to take the string array for the data. And we just need to add that in here for string array for the data on both of these functions. And that means for our show dialog system and hide dialog system functions, we're just going to cache the speed and immediate and try to get them from the parameters, defaulting the speed to one and defaulting immediate to false, and then throw those into the dialog system show command and hide command, which means we need to pass in the float for the speed and the bool for immediate. And by default, we'll set these to one and false, and then we'll pass in speed and immediate directly to the canvas controller and we'll do the same thing for hide and that will give us the ability to control the speed of this this transition and that means we can now say speed will be 0 0.5 for when we hide but we're going to immediately show it once we are done waiting and so now we come to the innkeeper and we should have a slower transition for the dialogue system yep we get a slower fade out and then instantly fade in and we could come into our dialog container and add the same availability to those inherited commands. And then we come back to the general commands and change show db and hide db to use a string array for the data. 
and update the commands to do the same thing that the dialog system did, only run it on the dialog container. And then we can test that by waiting while we hide the dialog box, fading out at a speed of 0.1. And then once we fade it in, we're going to immediately set it to true. And then we go here and we start fading out. It takes a longer time to fade out now. Then they proceed. And now we should fade in. And it immediately fades back in. Now the only thing we really need to fix is the background, so that way they fade out correctly too. As I said, the reason those backgrounds aren't fading out, even though they're images, is because they're using a particular shader. So once we finish a transition for a background, we should remove the shader and set it back to using the default UI material. So for us to take care of the graphic images, we need to go into the graphic object and scroll all the way down to our fading coroutine. This is where we handle the blending and the fading of the background images or any of our graphic panels. So the very first thing that we're doing is we are making sure that we set the texture and the alpha and blending. So we're assuming that we have this material assigned by default and the way we have this scripted is whenever a graphic object is created it's created with the blending material assigned to it so once we get to the very end if we have reached our target and our target is not zero we go ahead and we destroy all the background graphics on layers and this object is the one that is active which means at this point this is where we will remove that transition material and assign the old ui uh, material, which you can actually do just by removing the material directly off of the raw image. So we could say renderer.material equals null, and that would take us right back to using the UI material, but that would also remove the image reference. So beforehand, we need to say renderer.texture equals renderer.material, and we need to get the texture by the name, which is our material field main text, defined above as the matching name to what is configured within the shader for that material. So that takes care of that, which means we can fade in the image, and then if we go to our main canvas, we can fade it out as well. But there is a problem. Once we go to actually fade out the image, it doesn't have that blending texture anymore. So we click, and as soon as that's done fading, the background immediately goes out. It doesn't fade or blend anymore. So if we want it to be able to fade out after we have removed the material, we just need to make sure that it has the uh, transition material before we start the fading coroutine. It'll always be true. It'll always have that material on the very first one because it's been initialized. But if we go to fade out afterwards, then it's not going to be there. So we need to check if it's using the uh, the default UI material, and if it is, we need to set it to the transition material. So when we set renderer.material to null, it's automatically going to assign the, uh, the UI material to that uh, render raw image. So that's what we need to look for. We need to check if renderer.material.name equals, and it's just going to be default UI material. If we're using a different material, we would go ahead and switch this logic up to match up with whatever default material we're trying to use. But for just the default UI material, we're going to go ahead and go through that way. Although what I may do is I may turn that into a constant. Coming up top and going ahead and changing this to private constant string default UI material. And that's going to be the default UI material. And I will specify that down in this check. So if the renderer is using the default UI material, we first need to cast the texture that it's using. So we grab the texture and then we say renderer.material equals the get transition material. So we're going to grab that transition material again, and then we're going to apply the texture. Material.set texture to the main text. We're going to apply the texture that was on the image. So once we start fading, 
If we're fading out the image, we're going to re-add that transition material so we can use blending or whatever, and just make sure it's using the right image. And when we complete it, if it fades in all the way, then we're going to destroy it. That way it can be managed by a canvas group. It would be much easier if the actual material uh, handled the canvas group fading, but as I'm not a great shader writer, I just have to make a workaround for that. So right off the bat, we go ahead and fade in, and we can see that our image has no material. It's now just using the regular raw image. So if we were to change the alpha, it will go ahead and fade everything like it should. And once we get to the point to fade it out, if we look at that graphic, then we go ahead and click. And we can see that it is now fading out using that layer transition material again. We fade out, and now we fade into the new scene. So now we come to the point where we're going to fade out the entire UI. So here we go. Fade out the whole UI and set it back in. There we go. Now we've got the ability to hide both our dialog box and our entire uh, dialog system. So that's going to be it for this episode, and I'll see you guys in the next one.